Now we're going to talk about Django file fields and image fields. This of course is for uploading files to our project. Now the actual file itself is going to be uploaded into our space. Now, one of the good things about this is it's actually uploading it into a production space that we can use both locally and in production. But there's this whole other issue that we need to address. And that is if we go to the coding for entrepreneurs repo for this project, we can see there's a lot of branches in here. If we go to our fork repo, which I did a long time ago, I only have 49 branches, although I'm fully updated, right? I'm not behind the upstream version of coding for entrepreneurs. So how do I actually solve this problem? How do I actually get a branch that I want from the original repo into the repo I'm working on right now? Now it works like this. So the branch that I want is production dash two. Right, So it is definitely in this repo and there's probably gonna be future production branches as well. Uh, but of course, if I go into my project and I search for production dash two, I get nothing in there, right? So it's asking me to create this branch from the branch of main. Now, the way I solve this in GitHub is by going into an old branch, just a really old branch, let's say 10 dash start. Now I'll go ahead and just look for production dash two. I still don't have it. This time it's gonna go ahead and create this branch from 10 dash start. I'm gonna go ahead and create that. Notice that I still have this fetch upstream option and I can fetch and merge. So this will actually merge to the latest version of production two. And now that branch is on this repo. Now this could all happen locally as well, but this is just a quick and easy way to do it so that we can actually jump back into app platform and deploy this new production version. Now I have to do this a few different times locally on my particular project. But depending on when you're watching this, you'll probably see production three. So if you have production three available, that will include all of the changes we're gonna be doing here. I just don't need to do it at this time because of what we just solved. But in TriJango 3.2, what I wanna do though, is I wanna change my components to that production branch. So I've got branch in here, I have production one. I wanna change it now to being production two, which I might have to scroll all the way down for, and there we go. Now, of course, if you just want the main version, by all means, you can use main because that will be the latest production code, but it's not gonna be specific to what we have here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and run that. While that's updating, I'm also gonna go into Django-Migrate. One of the things you'll probably notice in your deployments is you get an error on the Django-Migrate, and that's because of this command right here. We no longer need that command in here. We just need the migrate command because we already did the create super user itself. And so of course, this is gonna build a new deployment for us and all that, and we'll check it once it's all done. Uh, but the general idea now is actually to create that file field. So what I wanna do is I wanna actually have a image that I can upload for my recipe ingredients, right? So each recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and upload recipe ingredient images. Now, what I wanna do here is I want to initially just upload a file that references that. The key thing here is that it allows a user to just upload any recipe ingredient whatsoever. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy this and it's gonna be implemented in the same way as our original recipe ingredient in the sense that it has a foreign key relationship to the recipe model itself. Now I'm gonna change the name of this model to recipe ingredient image. And I wanna have two fields in here. The first one should be fairly obvious. It's gonna go ahead and be the image itself. The second one is gonna be the extracted text. Now I'm gonna go ahead and implement this in a little while, but the first thing is the actual image itself. Now the big question here when it relates to Django models and data, like files or images, what actually happens, right? So if I do something like image and models dot file field initially, what is this file field actually doing? It's actually storing a path to the actual file, right? So it's storing the path, it is not storing the file. The file is actually not stored in the database at all. Instead, it's gonna be stored in the spaces, in this case, in the spaces on DigitalOcean. 
So that's really cool. It actually allows me to upload this directly to DigitalOcean from this file field, okay? So that's the goal here is to upload it and then store the reference path there. Now it can get confusing sometimes because maybe you want to store the actual data that's inside of that image in your database. There is a way to do that, but it starts to make your database really, really big and kind of unsustainable and definitely not the best place to store actual files. That's why Django has this file field option here. So if we look at this option inside of our Django project, what we've got is these in here, right? So really the main one is upload to, right? So it says none as of now, but what we can do here is we can do several things with this upload, but we need to understand just generally speaking, where it's gonna upload by default. So if I just said upload to, let's say for instance, recipes, and make sure you do not have a slash in front. But this is gonna upload this file, whatever it is, to this folder called recipes. But of course, where is that folder? Now, if we go into our settings, what we should see is our CDN configuration, right? So this CDN configuration actually gives us something that's related to where our files are gonna be stored, and that's this default file storage. Now, every once in a while, what you'll also see is something very similar to static root, but actually calling it media root. And this then would be, you know, something local. It's not going to necessarily be the production version. So I'm going to leave out this media root in the long run. Uh, but in the short run, I actually do want to test this. So I'll put this in media root as uploads. Okay, so the initial test will be without the CDN, and then we'll do it with the CDN. And so as it stands right now, that's where it's going to upload. So let's go ahead and give this thing a shot. I'm going to go ahead and bring it into my admin. And I'll just go ahead and do admin.site.register of that recipe ingredient image. And then, of course, I made a brand new model here. And this model, let's go ahead and look at it. This model only has two fields. Um, I could totally have the extracted text field, but I'll add that in a little bit. Uh, but now that we have this, let's go ahead and do python manage.py make migrations. And then python manage.py migrate. And then of course we're gonna run our server. Okay, so into our local host. I'm gonna jump into the admin, I'm gonna log in and go to the recipe ingredient images. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna grab a recipe object, any of them, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm gonna to navigate to my desktop and into this ingredients file here. Okay, so recipe ingredient image, makes sense to actually have the ingredients in here. Let's go ahead and open this, hit save and continue. And there is that path that I was mentioning. Okay, pretty cool. And so the upload to is bringing it to that path. Now in our settings, what we have is the CDN is where this should exist, or at least we could take a look. So in Try Django 3, we look in here and now I have this folder called media and inside of here, I have a folder called recipes and inside of there, ingredients one, right? So that actually uploaded it into production. That's cool. Now, if I comment this out, what I can do now is go back into my project, refresh in here, change the file itself to ingredients one or whatever. Actually, let's change it to ingredients two this time. I'll hit save and continue. It's a lot faster for one. Number two, if we look into our project, what we should see is a the static CDN right here. We have a new folder in here called uploads and recipes, right? So two different ways on how you can actually go about saving that data. Okay, so of course I actually want it in production and leave it like that. Now I did mention we want an image field. This is only a file field. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna install another package here. So inside of requirements.txt, I'm gonna install the package called pillow. This is for the Python image library, also known as Pill. Uh, so Pillow is the way to do it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open a 
new terminal here. We'll go ahead and activate our virtual environment and do pip install dash r requirements dot txt to get pillow in there. Um, and it's gonna install all the things necessary. If you just need to install pillow, by all means, go ahead and do that. Now, the reason we do this is because the image field needs the Python image library or pillow in here. It's a requirement to use the image field. Now, the difference between the image field and the file field is actually it's going to verify if it's an image versus a file, which we'll see the validation in just a moment for that. So now that we've got it as image field, what do we need to do? Well, like always, whenever we change our models, we do Python manage.py, make migrations, and then Python manage.py migrate. Now, in this case, it actually doesn't technically change how the field works. It just changes the validation itself. So if I go back in here and now if I try to upload, let's say, for instance, a text file, uh, let's just navigate into our project and upload requirements.txt and hit save and continue. Now it should give me this validation error, right? It's not an image or it's a corrupted image. That's the Python image library doing the validation for us. So if we come back in here, of course, I tried to upload it. I didn't change anything. It's now this. Okay. Um, so what I want to do now is I actually want to upload an image and do it again, right? So I'm going to go ahead and upload image, the same image, same name at least. And we hit save and continue. And what do you know? There we go. Now we actually have a problem with this and that is how it's being uploaded. So if I actually went into my desktop where those images are, and let's go ahead and just say that I'm going to go ahead and copy this first image and I'm going to call it image two, actually, let's make a new folder here and go examples. That first image, we're going to put it into a different folder and we're going to upload it with the same exact name. This is merely meant to highlight a problem with our current file field. So if we come in here, ingredients two, we hit save and continue. It still gives us ingredients dash two. And so we could actually go and look at the images itself and see what the problem is. The problem is, is that we're uploading to the exact same place. Now, this is not a huge problem, but it is a problem nonetheless. So it's actually uploading to whatever we set here with the same file name. So what I want to do is actually change this file name by creating a method here called, you know, something like image upload handler. And we could make it recipe ingredient image upload handler to be very explicit. And this takes in two arguments, the instance and the file name. Now we can actually verify those two arguments on the model field reference documentation. So make sure it's model field reference. You can scroll down a bit and you can see stuff like upload to and the argument. So it actually gives us these things right here, which is really nice. It actually gives us this path here. So what I'm actually going to do is change this file path only slightly. Okay. So let's go ahead and import pathlib at the very top. Import pathlib. Now what pathlib is going to allow me to do is take the file name itself and get the extension for it. So I'll go ahead and say f name or f path for file path is equal to pathlib.path of that file name. And now what I want to do is return almost the same thing. But instead of what we currently have, which would be fpath.name, that gives me the same exact thing, right? What we want in here instead is actually using the suffix. And then I want to pass in a new value for this. Now, so some new value. Now, what do we actually want to base this new value off of? Now, in the case of the documentation, it actually gives you an example of this and it bases the value off of the user ID from the instance. This is fine, but in our case, the instance or the actual, you know, object that's being saved is lacking a user ID. Now, we could totally get the recipe ID from here. So in this case, I can actually print out something like instance.recipe.id. And from there, I could get the user ID. And we could definitely go down that rabbit hole. 
Now, I actually don't need to make it specific to this user unless I really need to for some reason. In this case, I actually don't want it to be specific to the user because of how I'm gonna end up using these images in the long run. So what I wanna do then is I wanna import a package called UUID. And we're gonna go ahead and set up our new file name. Let's go ahead and set up our new file name down here. So new file name is equal to a string of UUID.UUID1. And so we're gonna go ahead and use that in here. So fpath.suffix will include .png or .jpg. It includes the period in there, which I don't, which is why I don't have it. Uh, and then our new, new file name, a UUID1, is a UUID plus a timestamp. We don't need to worry about that right now, but it's just a good idea to at least have UUID1 or 4. These are fairly unique. They're not perfectly unique all the time, but they're fairly unique. Um, and when you use UUID1, it's like, exponentially more likely that it's going to be unique because it includes a timestamp when it happens. Okay, so now I just am going to implement this as my new upload handler, and that's it. So we save that. We made some changes to our mi migrations and whatnot. And so here we go. We've got a syntax error in here. And so the syntax error is related to... They should say return, okay? And so that was silly. And then let's go ahead and run Python make migrations and then Python manage.py migrate, okay? So now, ignoring the name of the file, we can actually come in here, put the new ingredient name in here. We save it, hit save and continue. And now there we go. And of course, if I upload the exact same thing all over again, hit save and continue, it's gonna give me potentially a different name. <laughs> Not potentially, it will definitely give us a different name in here, right? So every single time it's giving us a different name. And then if we go back into our production uploads, what we can see in here now is gonna be related to all of that, right? And so this gives me a timestamp in the file name itself um, and a unique ID, which I think is really cool. It's really nice to do these things. Um, and so the other aspect of this is I actually probably wouldn't put it in as just recipes, but rather ingredient as well, um, or ingredient, just to make sure that at least it's kind of identified with the recipe ingredient image itself. And so that's actually handling the vast majority of the things that we wanna do with our uploading portion of this. So now what we need to do, of course, is implement this for our users. It's not really that challenging to do, but it does take a few extra steps.